Hello, Michael here with another RenderMan 22 tutorial. Today we're going to be having a look at how to render out motion vectors uh, for creating a motion vector blur um, in post. And we're going to be using Nuke to do that in post. So I've just got a scene set up here with um, 48 frames, two seconds, just of a wall rolling like that. And for reference, this is what the IPR will look like. So it's just very simple. Um, and what I want to do is output this with an AOV that allows me to blur it in post. So as you can see, there is no blur applied to that. So what we want to do is go up to our render settings, go to render man, go to features, and then you've got motion blur here. By default, it'll be set to off. We want to set it to 2D motion vectors. In your AOV settings, you want to go down to DPDT time, select your beauty, and input that AOV into your beauty pass. When you render this out, it's actually gonna render it out as a separate pass, but just for the sake of ease, um, I find it's easier just to chuck it in with your beauty pass, then you can either shuffle it out, or in this case, we're just gonna run it directly in to our uh, vector motion blur uh, node in Nuke. Uh, so when you're happy with that, you can either render this out as an animation or you can render it out as a still. If the uh, object or if any of the objects in your scene have m motion in them um, and if I just rendered out this single frame which is halfway through it would still apply the motion blur to it so this is still good if you're just rendering out a um, single frame rather than an animation and you still want to have the freedom to apply motion blur to it in post um, rather than doing it by hand in something like Photoshop or something like that. I have already rendered this out, but if you wanted to render it out, obviously see so render to animation and make sure you have your AOV set up as I set. Then go up to render man and batch render. If you are doing a single frame, you will still need to batch render it out so you get the correct AOVs rendered out with it. Now, once you've got your uh, batch render done, we're just gonna hit R and we wanna grab our beauty and we'll just have a look at that. So that's what it looks like at the moment. And as you can see in the middle frame there, it should have motion blur, but it doesn't currently. So let's add that in. It's gonna tab and type in uh, vector motion or uh, vector blur. And you'll get that tab there. So on the right here, what we're gonna change the UV channels to is DPD time. My presets, we're gonna change to PR man, pixel render man. And just to show you, well, you can already see it's starting to actually have a little bit of motion blur in there. Uh, but also to show you the UVs, what you should be seeing is this. So this is what the motion vector pass will look like. Um, the red parts of your render will be the forward motion and green will be backward motion, I think from memory. So what you'll see at the start is it's basically faded out because it's, uh, it's not started moving yet. And then as it starts moving and increasing in velocity, you'll see a higher value of those two colors as it fades out again and stops moving in the end. So if we just set it to the middle there and we go back to result, um, just to show you what this actually looks like, we'll just increase the motion amount. You can change the blur type to uniform or Gaussian. Gaussian will probably give you the better result. And I'm just gonna really increase that to 250 so you can get a good idea of how that functions. And then we just play that out, put it in the cache. And as you can see, you've got a nice amount of motion blur there. It's fairly, it's, a pro, it's obviously it's over the top. You probably only want maybe 50 um, if you were doing this, um, well, maybe 100. Depending on how fast it's going, obviously will determine how much motion blur you actually wanna have in your um, final. Um, if you're rendering it onto a plate, obviously you'd look at your plate to determine how much motion blur is actually happening from the camera um, and the shutter. But that's pretty much all there is to it. That's a very brief overview of how to output that AOV. Um, so if that helped you, make sure you click the like button. And if you haven't already, subscribe as I do a couple of tutorials every week uh, or a tutorial every week. And if you'd like to stay up to date, make sure you check out the Facebook page. And if you want to see more of my work, check out the Instagram that's in the description. Uh, that's it for now, though. Thank you very much for watching and happy rendering.